Hey, what's going on guys? Ben Brewster here at Tread Athletics. And I want to touch on this question uh, that we frequently get some version of this, which is really asking about showcases and are they worth it? And is it worth spending the time, the resources, um, and, and kind of the truth behind showcases? So this is not all positive, this is not all negative. I'm just gonna kind of try to highlight the gray areas a little bit and, and how I see it. Um, the first thing that I, I like to look at is, first off, what is your goal? What is the athlete's goal? Uh, are you trying to play Division One baseball? Are you trying to play NAIA baseball? Are you trying to play Division Two baseball? Uh, what's your goal and where do you stand in relation to that goal? Um, two, what is your limiting factor for getting there? Is it that you don't throw hard enough? Is it that you don't throw enough strikes? Is that um, you, know, you are good enough, but you truly just don't have anybody uh, that is aware that you exist because for whatever reason, they just haven't seen you on the field. Um, so again, I look at exposure, resources, and time. Uh, when it comes to exposure, Really, this is the purpose of showcases is exposure, but um, there, there's a lot of other uh, resources out there that can allow for exposure. Um, even something as simple as, you know, tweeting your video on Flackround um, or, you know, tweeting video at, you know, so-and-so college coach. Uh, I've, I've seen these things work before. So um, again, showcases are about exposure and is your limiting factor actually exposure or is it truly being, just not being ready, not being good enough? Uh, resources. Are your resources limited? Are your resources unlimited? Um, you know, are you spending every single last penny you have on going to so and so showcase thing that that's going to be the magic unlock to get you to your dream school? Um, or, you know, is it you have plenty of resources and you can, you know, you can afford to go to 10 showcases a year and train at, you know, the, the class A facility in your area or, or whatever, what have you. So uh, resources are a big one and then time is another big one. So um, are you still 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, you have a couple of years of time to continue developing, continue um, you know, trying to get to where you need to be before you worry about exposure. Uh, or is time running out and maybe you only have a couple months left and you still aren't committed to a school. Um, maybe that becomes a little bit more of a pressing and urgent matter. So be good enough. This is really what, what I tell players, which is um, almost always the limiting factor is that you aren't good enough. And again, I know it's a little bit subjective in terms of you know, a lot of people say, well, if you're throwing 80, 82 and you're having success in high school, like these D1s should should want you, like you could get D1 hitters out. And that might be true. Um, but when I say good enough, it's relative to um, what you see at the next level. So it's relative to, let's say you want to play at Stanford, right? Take the average pitcher, middle of the middle depth pitcher at Stanford and see what type of pitcher they have, what type of stuff do they have, what type of off speed do they have, what type of command do they have, right? Being good enough in that context is that level. Let's say you want to be the Friday guy at Penn State. Well, what are the Friday last 10 Friday guys at Penn State? What is their stuff like? What is their command like? Et cetera, et cetera. So being good enough is subjective and it's relative to the context, but I'm um, sitting and complaining that, you know, college coaches aren't looking for crafty righties throwing 81. Um, that's kind of counterproductive. Look at what types of guys actually get the scholarship, actually get the offers, actually get the playing time. And that's your uh, kind of barometer for are you good enough or not for the level you want to be. So exposure without this is meaningless because again, you're just marketing an unfinished product and you're not going to get the interest that you want from the schools that you want. Um, if let's say you are good enough and it's, it's really, um, or let's say you are completely running out of time rather, then exposure can at least get your foot in the door at the next level. So if you're a senior, throw 81, you wanted to play D1, but it's just not in the cards on this timeline, right? Maybe you can still get seen get your foot in the door at a D2, a JUCO, um, and then continue having more time to develop and then maybe ultimately transfer to, to a division one if, if that's your goal. So um, there can be a time where it makes sense to go the exposure route, um, depending on time. Again, I mentioned flat ground. There's lots of ways to get exposure for free. Uh, my story, so me personally, you know, I'm biased as a player. I spent, you know, 99% of my time worrying, worrying about getting better. I'm worrying about myself uh, versus the exposure piece of it. As a coach, again, um, I spend and, and Tread spends 99% of our coaching time trying to get players better and uh, you know a small sliver of time you know once they're in that position assisting them with kind of the, the recruiting or the, the signing or the exposure uh, piece of that depending on the level of the guy. Uh, myself I went to one showcase um, you know sophomore year of high school uh, throw an 80 got no interest. I uh, went to one uh, recruiting camp it, it was uh, at University of Maryland and ultimately um, that was where I was uh, I was kind of given my preferred walk-on spot out of that recruiting camp two months before uh, my freshman year started. So I was already recruited. I was already committed to going to Maryland. I knew I didn't have a spot on the team and I went to this recruiting camp ahead of time, hoping that I would 
earn a spot on the team and I, I was given that preferred walk-on status, uh, which is very, very un unusual, very, very uncommon, um, you know, kind of having more context now for, for how that worked. But um, I consistently ignore the politics. I worried about developing, I worried about what I could control. And the difference between that first showcase I went to throwing 80 and the second, you know, the recruiting camp as a senior who had just come into that camp having a really dominant uh, year, my senior year of high school, and then coming to that camp sitting mid 80s as a sidearm lefty, right? I suddenly was over that threshold where you could argue that I was good enough uh, or certainly was good enough to at least get a little bit of attention, uh, whether or not I was certainly not one of the better pitchers on the team my freshman year, but I was over that minimum threshold uh, to where it could make sense to start getting some exposure. Um, so be so good they can't ignore you. That's kind of always been something that, that's resonated with me and focusing on what you can control and how developed you are to where they're forced to actually give you playing time. The college coaches are forced to notice you. The scouts are forced to notice you. That's that's how I approach it. Um, again, wasn't no interest from uh, the showcase I went to. Um, I kind of look at this as like, imagine you're a car company and you have a car that's half finished, right? You maybe just have the kind of the body of the car designed, right? Are you gonna go spend all of your budget, all of your this, this available budget, um, trying to market this half finished car? Or are you going to spend that money on the research and development to actually finish the car, make it the absolute best possible, so that then when it's finished, you can worry about marketing it, worry about advertising, worry about the exposure. I think it's a pretty obvious uh, answer to that question. And it's really the same thing when it comes to uh, showcases. There's no point in showcasing before you're actually fully ready, at least in my opinion. Um, the opportunities will merge. We've, we've seen this time and time again. Once a, a pitcher is good enough, or at least is above that kind of minimum threshold, I'm not saying they're dominant big league all-star caliber. I'm just saying once you're above the minimum threshold for the given level that you're trying to play at, um, the opportunities will be abundant. Um, one example I'm thinking of in particular, we had a uh, freshman um, uh, transfer in college, 1994 guy, right-handed pitcher, um, tweeted out a video of him throwing and I had, I believe, 90 plus DMs and emails in the first day. Um, I can think of other examples where, you know, we didn't even post a video of an 80 to 91 righty uh, transfer and it was 50 or 60 DMs in one day. So uh, there will be opportunities once you're uh, you know, above those kind of minimum thresholds and meet the minimum criteria. But if we posted out, hey, we have a 78 to 80 mile an hour righty with two pitches, right? Probably would have been five DMs. So again, I'm not saying that the 78 mile an hour guy wasn't a good pitcher. I'm just saying for the level you're trying to play at, you need to look at the types of guys that are getting those scholarships and getting that playing time. And that's what you use as your measuring stick. So some recommendations. Um, personally, I would recommend allocating a majority of your time and resources to whatever your limiting factor is. Is it that you don't throw hard enough? Is it that you haven't uh, put on weight? Is it your nutrition? Um, is it you don't you throw hard but you don't have good command? Is it that you throw hard but you don't have a good uh, breaking ball? Um, whatever that limiting factor is, I would place the majority of your time trying to fix that problem. Um, exposure, in my opinion, is the last step in the process and it's only necessary if you're fringe, right? College coaches, um, scouts, right? They know who the studs in their area are. If you're in high school right now, you know who the two, three, four, ten, 10, uh, you know, D1 commits in your area are. You know who the guys throwing 90 plus are. You know who the guys throwing 95 are, um, right? Unless you just developed recently, unless you're the guy that just went from 80 last year, had a huge growth spurt, now he's throwing 92, and no one's seen you yet. Um, you know, then exposure might be really worth it because just no one's no one's seen the transformation that you've had. But word will start getting out very, very quickly um, in, in those situations. So exposure is really more valuable as the last step. And for the guys that are extremely fringe, um, where they're just kind of, they could go either way as far as um, are they able to make it to the next level? And do they need that extra little bit of help to get there? Um, I'm just going to comment on development showcases and, and, and this term because I know it's, it's been around for a little bit, a little while now. It was around when, um, you know, I was going through this whole recruiting process, you know, 15 years ago, um, 12, 15 years ago. I kind of look at development showcases as an oxymoron because typically if you're at a showcase, you're not worrying about development. You're worrying about marketing uh, your kind of polished tools. Um, if you're worrying about, if you're worrying about development, then well, we're trying to improve. We're not trying to showcase something. So to me, it's kind of an oxymoron. Um, generally, these showcases, just just to be frank, like these are money-making gigs for the uh, assistant coaches at these colleges, and that's totally fine. Like they need they need a way to, to you know make money to be able to help the team. But just understanding what you're signing up for, um, it's really not about showcasing that much. Um, it's it's pretty uncommon um, that 
pitchers will be directly recruited out of these showcases and if so these are the guys that are you know these are the studs at those events if you're not the stud at the event and you're just you know one of the 70 faces at this event like this is a money-making gig um, and, and again i haven't really seen development happen or hear about development happening at too many of these events um, these are overpriced events to make money for the assistant coaches 99.9% um, .9 of the time. So just be aware of that going into it. And if you have plenty of resources, by all means, um, you know, by all means, but just be aware um, and allocate your resources accordingly. Exposure can happen for me. You know, I went to one of these recruiting camps, development showcases, you know, hosted by, by Maryland. And again, admittedly that, you know, that was how they, how they made money. They weren't going into those things, trying to um, recruit a bunch of talent, right? They were on the recruiting trail, finding the top prospects in the country to recruit their talent. This was a money-making gig, but in my case, obviously exposure happened and that was how I got a spot on the team. So it can work, um, just don't count on that as being the primary way that you get exposure. When it comes to showcase teams, right, there are some teams that, you know, if you're playing summer ball anyway and you happen to be on a team that is, you know, going around playing in front of college coaches, playing in front of scouts, like to me, there's little downside. Um, you know, if you're already gonna be playing summer ball anyway, you already have the resources, the time, and that makes sense in terms of your overall developmental plan to be playing summer ball, competitive summer ball, um, then I don't see a downside to that. Um, just be aware how these organizations operate, right? If you're, uh, you know, your kid is on the C team and, you know, you're paying 15 grand a year for this uh, showcase team, uh, just be aware, like the B and C teams are typically the ones, you know, paying the way for the guys on the A team who are not paying anything in a lot of cases. Um, and you know, a lot of times development isn't really uh, a focus in the off season. So you're paying for these tournaments, but then in the off season, um, you're told that you're gonna get development. And a lot of times you don't get development, you don't get the coaching side of it, um, you know, really focused on. So just being aware how those work, it, I'm not saying the showcase teams are a waste of money, waste of time, and they can be valuable. Um, again, just understanding kind of where you or your son fits in that hierarchy and whether exposure truly is his limiting factor or whether he should be focusing more on the actual kind of development side of, of his overall, uh, you know, four-year plan. Why the exposure obsession? Um, again, for me, exposure does help and matter at times, right? Like we've had, even for, you know, pro free agents, like there's a time and a place where, where you really, uh, you really do want an agent, really do want an advisor. I um, mean, you really do want to um, get this individual athlete seen um, by those of the next level. Um, it's specifically in regards to at the high school level, I think that exposure has kind of been the narrative for the past decade because it's an easier sell to parents and athletes. Um, really, you're selling, you know, hey, you actually are good enough. Um, you know, all these coaches just haven't discovered your hidden talent yet. Versus selling them, hey, your kid's not good enough. You're not good enough uh, to play at, you know, these D1 schools that you've listed. Um, it's just an easier sell to, to tell somebody that it's not, it's not you, it's them. It's not your fault, it's their fault. Let me come in and, and fix that issue for you. Um, so it's it's an easier thing to, to provide than actually developing athletes on scale, right? Uh, if, if Perfect Game was actually, you know, had a development focus for the hundreds of thousands of athletes that kind of go through their system, right? That's not a scalable, that's not really a scalable model. Um, and so that's, you know, kind of frankly not what they've kind of focused their, their time on. But my opinion, again, in the kind of the development realm, this is what actually gets these players to their real goals. Their real goal isn't to just get on a college team. Their real goal is to be a dominant Friday starter and eventually get drafted. And, and you know, they have all these actual performance-based uh, goals and getting there again requires actually developing as a player, not simply expecting this, uh, you know, funneling away thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to uh, a company that promises you exposure when that's rarely actually the limiting factor. So when are showcases actually worth it? I think if you have deep resources, if you have a very limited time, a very limited window, um, to, again, if your product is at least good enough to play at the schools that you wanna be playing at, and then if it's the appropriate time of year and appropriate on-ripping status. So, you know, it's not the middle of December and you haven't been throwing for six weeks and you just last second decide to do a showcase, um, or, you know, you've just been playing year round because you just continually do showcases September, October, November, December, January, and then a year passes and you haven't taken any time off to actually develop, to gain weight, to lift weights, to do any of this other stuff. Again, I would just keep in mind those, those variables when deciding if it's worth it, and sometimes it is. 
when aren't showcased is worth it, again, kind of the opposite of all of those. Um, when you're draining all your resources with very little allocated towards development, when you're super young, when you're not even close to good enough, and then if it's an inappropriate time of year. So again, that's just my general thoughts on showcases. I'm not all anti-showcase. I just think it's kind of uh, sold as a magic bullet in a lot of cases. And, you know, it's really kind of draining the vast majority of the funds of these, you know, of these parents of high school kids where they're sold into kind of this, this dream and this belief that like this is the answer when really it's that your kid throws 81 and he wants to play at Miami and his answer is he needs to throw 92 to play at Miami and he needs someone to give him some answers and some, some tips and advice and a plan to actually get there. So I know a little, a little bit ranty, but um, you know, sometimes I, you know, just feel passionately about giving my take on some of these, uh, some of these questions and hopefully you guys took something away from that. I know it's a little bit of a controversial topic, so let me know what you think about showcases down below. I'm sure there's going to be some positives, sure there's going to be some, some negative experiences. So let's start that discussion down below in the comments. If you guys aren't subscribed, go ahead, do that. Uh, thumbs up, all that stuff. And uh, let me know if you have any uh, potential topics for future videos down below as well. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks again.